All right, so welcome. Um, my name is Andrew Toombs, uh, I work for Zing, and this is Catherine, Catherine Corston, who's the HR manager at UK Youth, and we're here to present on City HR, the journey so far. Um, so, whoops. Oh, first glitch. Do you want me to? Yeah, if you can work that out. <laughs> so, why City HR? <laughs> Sorry. So we have a late switch to the Mac, which neither of us are that familiar with. So why CBHR? And if you just roll on to the next slide, please, Catherine. We hope that in this little cartoon, we capture a bit of the sense of, of, of why we think CBHR is, is needed. So it's probably a scenario that all of you have, have had involvement with in, in one form or another where someone, need, someone wants a report, someone's got to provide some numbers in Excel, um, and of course, there's lots of problems with this, you know, multiple versions, people keep going back to revise the, the report. Um, maybe the report has, has had to be compiled from paper records, and then someone bashing it into Excel. Um, How do we back it up? You know, if you're, if you're going to rely on Excel reporting, you've got to make sure those Excel sheets are included in the backups. Maybe the Excel report you need is in an office elsewhere. So lots of problems with uh, recording HR data, re reporting on HR data. And so we thought um, it'd be good if we could have something like CIVI CRM, but in the HR space. So we launched the project CIVI HR. And we've got a total of six uh, non-profits who are working with us on the development. Um, so we've got Farm Africa, they've got a, a head office in London, and then five offices in East Africa. Sneha, who um, are based in Mumbai, they have health workers who go around uh, providing education on women's health. The, let's see if I can get the acronym right, the Aga Khan Rural Support Institute, can't remember what P is for. Um, but this is about um, helping sort of small holding farmers in uh, Gujarat in, uh, in India. Uh, UK Youth, where, where Catherine is from, um, I'll, I'll let her, her do more of an introduction uh, in a short while. Uh, over in Columbus, uh, Georgia, uh, we've got Valley Rescue Mission, who are providing mainly sort of soup kitchens and, and help to homeless people in, in Georgia. And also over in Vancouver, we've got uh, the uh, New Democratic Party, um, the, the, the British Columbia branch of the New Democratic Party. So we've got a good geographical spread of different non-profits who are already using CIVI HR in its, in, in its sort of basic form and most importantly are feeding back to us uh, how to make it better. Um, and we've got a little bit of a slide just to sort of cheerlead for the team. Um, you may recognise one or two faces uh, around the conference uh, over the next two days. Okay, so we'll get on to the demo. Um, so this is going to be a demo of uh, version 1.4. Which so far has things like a, a staff directory. Uh, you can put in information about pay and, and, and sort of staff information, the sort of HR information that we typically collect. Um, we can record uh, absences, so holidays and, and sickness. And we can also do recruitment, so publish vacancies, have people apply for, for vacancies, and so on. So, um, I don't think we're quite there yet, but I think in the next six months we'll, we'll be close to having the sort of minimum viable product which is actually useful to, uh, to HR managers at, at non-profits. So as I say, I think, I think we're close to, 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 to getting there. Um, still, it's still a bit of work to do, but, uh, but in six months' time I think we will have something which is probably as good as the free versions of many of the other 
HR software suites are on offer. So I'll hand over to Catherine now, and just to introduce herself and just uh, talk a bit about how she's using Civi HR at UKU. Hi. Um, so I joined UK Youth just over a year ago. Uh, UK Youth is a young person charity that deals with uh, sort of non-formal and life skills for young people. It's got about 100, just over 100 staff, and we've got two sites in the UK, plus lots of remote workers throughout the UK as well. Um, and when I joined, it's got absolutely no HR system whatsoever, not even a spreadsheet. Everything was paper-based. So trying to find information, can I have so-and-so start date, can I have so-and-so salary, I'm sifting through paper files, don't have all the paper files, some are in London, some are in Hampshire, um, a lot of the knowledge is kept by the managers, you've got a data protection risk there, um, and it was just, it was just a nightmare. Um, so one of the first things <coughs> I spoke about when I joined was that we need to centralise the employee data. We need to have a system in place so we've got it all there, all streamlined, all centralised, so we can report on it, we can have accurate, up-to-date data, one person doing the data inputting, not managers throughout the, UK, uh, throughout the company trying to store their staff data individually, um, and also something that we can match to the payroll, so the data in the HR system is then linked to the payroll in some way, so you've got one person to monitor that. Um, so we set up a partnership with Zing to work on the Civi HR, um, and the first thing that was a huge benefit was just having employee data in one place to allow me to access it. Um, it's made life so much easier. Um, so if anyone phones up, whether it be a manager, an employee, how much holiday have I got left, when was my last pay rise, what was my start date, I can just go into the system and the information's there. And it's all there, so everything you need to know is in one place. Um, it also allows us to report, so you can report on absences and trends, you can report on he um, headcount and turnover, full-time equivalent, you can do staff lists, you can do salary lists, um, you can write your own reports, it's got standard reports in the system already, so it, it's just, it just kind of all singing or dancing. As, I said, there's a, as Andrew said, there's a, there's a few bits that they're still working on which will make it even better, but at the moment it, it's perfect for what I need. Um, having worked in um, the, a different industry and using various different HR systems and then introducing a HR system to a not-for-profit, the ones I used in the past wouldn't have been able to cater for all the things we need in a not-for-profit. Different funding streams you attach to employees, um, different cost centres you attach to employees and stuff like that. So this is what you need for a not-for-profit. It kind of makes life a lot easier, especially as a HR manager. So what I'll do, if I haven't missed anything, no, I great. will uh, run through a quick demo of the system. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a new employee and run through the different sort of functions you've got for that employee. And at the end, I'm just going to hand over to Andrew to go through the vacancy bit because that's a new function that I haven't used yet. So he will talk the vacancies through for you. Okay, has anyone got any questions before I start? Okay, so new individual. So it's all very sort of self-explanatory. Um, so you, um, we use national insurance numbers as because it's a, a unique number as an identity. So, but you can change what sort of ID you want to, to use. Um, and then you'd put your emails, your phone numbers in, your sort of contact details as and when you've got them. Um, it records people's demographics, so again, which is all good for when you're doing your reporting. Sorry, this mouse is a bit slow. Also, your extended demographics, so if you're doing your sort of equal ops um, recording. <laughs> so. 
Sorry, I'm not getting on with the mouses very well. Sorry. But yeah, so you put the ethnicity in there. Um, if you collect the religious, sexual orientation or marital data, and then your joining date, um, address, which you would input, and then um, you can add notes to a starter and you can um, add them at this stage to a group. So if you've got like a, an email group amongst your staff, you can add them to that. So it takes you to like a, a summary screen, so the, the employee data, which so when you're looking for data, it's all in one place. Um, and then you go and you add the job in. Um, so you've got volunteers and trustees in there as well, so it doesn't have to be um, paid employees. Um, I don't know how your sort of organisations work, but we have a lot of fixed term contracts, so you can add the start and the end dates to the contracts in there as well. Okay. So once you've set up that, you just then go through each of the um, sort of tabs on the side and fill in all the sort of job data, pay data. And it automatically will calculate your full-time equivalent, so if you've got part-time workers in there as well. Um, you can attach scales to the salaries um, if you use a scaling system. Um, you can add roles, so people that may work I don't know, two days as a customer service administrator and then three days as finance clerk. You can split their roles out, and by splitting the roles out, you can then split out the cost centres and stuff like that. Um, I'll just go through the one, so you put in a, the cost centre, whatever it might be, um, and also if it's attached to funding... Um, I'll just select any other one. So if it's attached to any sort of funding, like National Lottery or whatever it might be, you attach the funding through there, and you can then move the percentage. So if it was 50% funded, 50% not sort of thing. Um, and this is where you record all the um, sort of level of staff, manager's name. And then you can sort of add notes regarding the funding as well. So if it is certain sort of criteria for the funding, you can add notes so you've got that recorded. Um, and then you add the leave. So <coughs> we don't allocate anything other than your standard sort of annual leave. But you could, if you have paid sick or um, different maternity paternity entitlements, you can save them in there as well. Um, also, you record any insurances, so if you've got any sort of private medical care or life assurance, cash plans, and then again, the pensions. Um, so you would just put in your pension, however it is. With auto enrolment in the UK, that's going to be quite an important one going forward. So then you've got all your job details saved, and then... You've then got the, all the tabs along here, which you can you go on recording all your, your staff data. Um, if I go to the assignments first, we have probation periods. So everyone that joined would be on a three-month, six-month probation, whatever it might be. So um, the assignments is where you can record that, and then you get your reminders as to when probations are coming to end and stuff like that. So, uh, so you just set up a new assignment... And then you'd manage it. Uh, 
Um, so it's got some sort of standard sort of activities there already. Um, with dates, it's made assumptions on, but you can go into the edit and change the dates, or you can add an, an activity. So I don't know, if you did a follow-up um, meeting, you can then add that activity in there, um, the date that you did it, or the date that it's scheduled for. Um, and then you can assign them to people as well, and then you save it. I can't read that, it's in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just cancel? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm not doing something, am I? Okay. Oh, I've done the date wrong, probably. Yeah. And then that adds it in there. So it's, it's come up as it's out of date, but <coughs> you just go in and you would change it to completed or cancelled or extended or whatever it is you need it to be. And then you go in and you can record absence. So if someone has holiday, um, it's very standard. You put in the dates that the holiday is booked for. Um, so you've got a week, a week off in October. Um, uh, if they work part time, you can untick the days. So if they're not having five days off, they're having four. You would just do that. Um, at the moment, because we don't have a self-service, you would just save and approve it because you're obviously inputting it because it's been approved. But when the self-service comes, you'll get managers to be able to approve the annual leave. Um, and the same with things like sickness. Again, you would just add the date they were sick. Um, type of sickness, so obviously you can edit this list. So um, And also you can put comments, so need doctor's note or... Um, sort of been signed off for a week or whatever it might be so you've, you've got that sort of constant record keeping so you can always review back to it um, and then you can go into calendars as well so you can have a quick look at people's annual leave and sickness you can always monitor their um, entitlements and also you can see how much leave they've got left and stuff like that at the balances down the end Um, bank details, self-explanatory, you would just edit, add in the bank details, um, which then you would use for when you're moving um, information across to the payroll. With the career, career history, when Andrew talks through the vacancy, um, with that it will upload from applications and CVs and actually record people's career history in there. So it's not an internal thing, it's so you've sort of got information from where they were working in the past. Um, emergency contacts, again, very straightforward. You would just add um, the details of the person who it is. Um, uh, so email address, phone number, address, um, and you'd save it. So you've got all the uh, emergency contact details there, um, which are easy to access. Um, groups, as I said at the beginning, if you attach someone to a group, so you've got an email group or a, a department group, um, you would have that in here. So you would just add a group. Um, so they would become part of that group if you want to send out emails from the system to certain people. Um, identification, so it's already got the national insurance number, but if you were to add uh, passports uh, or driving licenses, you would add that all through these fields here. Um, and immigration is for staff that may need visas. So again, you would just go through the, uh, the boxes here, add the visa type, the visa number, the dates and stuff like that. Um, and you'd be able to set up reminders and stuff for visas that are expiring. Um, so you can monitor to make sure staff are all legally in the UK. Um, again, storing data on medical and disability records <coughs> or the equal ops. Um, notes, um, if you've got to add a note, you've had a, a meeting for member staff, an informal chat, and you just want to record it somewhere, um, you can add that in there as also. Um, qualifications, again, with the um, recruitment section, people's past qualifications will automatically upload into this. But again, you can go in and manually add qualifications and training that they've done as well, so you've got a record of their learning and development. 
and the change log is just then a, an audit trail of what changes have been made. Um, there's a directory which will have all your staff details. So it'll have all the contact details, the, so if you just want a snapshot of all your staff, there's a list there. Um, that when you have the self-service as well, um, all employees will be able to use this as a, an internal phone list, so they'll have, um, you can sort of um, monitor what information's on there, so you can have it so it's just got people's email addresses and extension numbers, so therefore all staff would be able to use that as a phone list. Um, and then you've got the reports section as well, where you can run various reports. Um, you could do an absence report. So that just shows you what absence people have got in the date range there at the top, but then you can always change the criteria um, by department, change the date range. Um, if you want a single person, you can use just their name as criteria, um, and you can do that for all the reports. You can edit the criteria to get the information that you wish. Um, I think that's pretty much all the bits that I use at the moment covered, but I'll, Andrew will go through the vacancy bits for you. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's just it's great to have a centralised system with all employee data there at your fingertips without having to sift through paper folders that are probably out of date and not got accurate information in them. So I'll pass you back to Andrew. And Thank you, Captain. Thank you very much. So yes, yeah, just to show you the vacancies section. So a good place to start is with the dashboard. So this gives the, the HR manager or who, whoever is responsible for recruitment a view of uh, vacancies which are currently open at the moment, some others which are up and coming and just, just in draft form, for example. And we have a, 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 a nice graphical representation to show how many applicants are at different stages of the vacancy process. So. For this one, uh, the, the um, one at the top left, the senior support specialist, we've got one person who is so far just, just having submitted an application, all the way through to another person here. What stage is this person at? So they're at the manager interview stage. And then we've got another person who's actually been hard for the job. Um, so perhaps there's uh, going to be more than one person uh, being recruited for this post. So, uh, um, so we've got three three applicants in 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 the process at different stages. And if the manager interview goes well, then I can go and uh, edit the um, the status of this this applicant, move them on to the group interview, for example. And we'll say um, this is next. Save that, and then you see that the the now the number of people at the manager interview stage is down to zero, and we've got one person in at the group interview stage. So if we just go back to the dashboard, and what I might do is just. Um, enter a, a new app, a, a new applicant for the um, role of senior support specialist. So then go new applicant. Okay. So I'm going to put myself. <coughs> uh, actually, I'll do um, Japan. Got it to Mac. That one. That one. Yeah. Okay. Got some work experience. I've got an educational qualification. Um, previous pay per month, maybe. 2000, and they're hoping to double it. I know English, contact number, Steve Manchester. 
and then um, I can upload the uh, CV or, or, or resume at, at, at this point. Um, further down the line, um, we'd, we'd hope to have more complex application forms where you know you, people can enter you know all of the information required without needing to to, to submit a CV. But, but at the moment, you know it's a it's a it's a reasonable system. And we apply for the vacancy. And now if I go back to my dashboard, so now we've got two applicants for the senior support specialist. Go and see who they are. So Peter Pan. And we're going to schedule a phone call with him. This will be the first phone call, and it will be phone him to ask him if he is any good. And then we've got that listed within our schedule, within our, our application process. And then when we've actually had the phone call, Sorry, it was this one. Once we've actually had the phone call, we can then enter in some more notes. Change it to completed and then move on to the next stage. And we'll move him along. In fact, well, he's very good, so we'll just send him straight to the psych psychological exam. Okay, now again, back to the dashboard. Now the vacancy itself, if we go and have a look at the, the details of what's been configured here. So we've created the vacancy, we've, we've given it a name, um, we've specified where the, the position is going to be based, we've specified a salary, a bit of a description of what the, the applicant is expected to do. Benefits, all the things you would expect to be listed when the, the vacancy is published. Um, so the first step in the process is to define your vacancy. We also specify down here what stages are going to be part of the, part of the application process. So for perhaps you know, a more junior role, there might just be the, you know, a telephone interview and maybe one face-to-face -face interview. For the new chief exec of the organization, um, uh, a larger you know number of, uh, of steps in the process we also define the application form we can use a, an existing template or create a, a new one so we can see the details of the one used here so it's a question of pulling fields out from from this panel here out into this panel here and then we can preview the what actually is is displayed on the on the application form page and the same for the evaluation so if some of the steps say an interview were going to be undertaken by um, perhaps the the line manager rather than HR we can set up some evaluation criteria in advance that they will need to follow and to fill out and then we can record the results within the the vacancy so hopefully we, we, we can get some standardization across how the different applicants are are assessed so and again it's a question of pulling 
fields from the right across to the left and then we can just preview so this one's quite quite short but it does mean that whoever's doing the interview does have to follow a particular structure rather than just interviewing and then you know just verbalizing whether they thought they they were a good person or or not And then we can list our vacancies publicly. So um, we can create a link that's embedded in the um, website of the, uh, the, the, the main website of the non-profit and with the, the um, details of the position uh, on the page. And then the, the application button then takes the, the applicant into CVHR so they can fill out the the uh, the application form themselves. And one one caveat, of course, is that um, we haven't quite got the the self service yet. Um, we can publish the vacancy, <laughs> um, but as yet we 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 it, the only person who can actually enter the details is the person with the the the, the admin permissions. But but that's uh, that's the the roadmap for the future. And then we can see. So this is how it would appear. On the on the public website. Okay, that is about it. All right. So so that's it for what we've already got in CBHR. In the pipeline. So in the next phase, the next six months, building up to version one point five, we're adding in. Uh, job history. So at the moment we can record the, the, the current details of someone's job, but when they change job, we just write over what's already there. We, at the moment, I'm afraid, we, we can't keep any history. But in version 1.5, we will build in the ability to keep the full history. Obviously, that's very important from an HR perspective, so we can track the individual all the way through the organisation, and even, even after they've left that. You can currently keep the job history, but it, it's just not in a very sort of straightforward way. So you just still have the history there, but um, it's not a sort of a, an easy visual. So you can you can do it. So you put end dates and start new jobs and stuff like that. But it's not the the most ideal way. So when the job history bit comes, it'll be a lot easier and a lot more straightforward. Yeah. Um, similar similar story for paid history. Um, and uh, what I think will be the most significant uh, improvement in um, encouraging more nonprofits to adopt this will, uh, will be the self-service. So people will be able to apply for um, vacancies online. Um, absence requests can, will be um, approved by line managers. Um, people will be able to log on to see their own details. Um, so rather than HR getting a request saying, oh, you know, what was my pension deduction last month or something, um, the individual will just log in and see their own details within City HR. Um, and so the, the hope is that we can have all of those features ready by the time of the next uh, CIVI conference in San Francisco of April next year. Um, beyond that, and in no set order as yet, um, we're going to go on and do timesheets, appraisals, expenses, asset tracking for um, keeping records of whether someone's got a company laptop, sorry, a, a, an organisational laptop or maybe a mobile phone or something. Um, uh, online job application. I see it's, it's slightly foxy. It's, uh, it's split. So yes, yeah, sorry. I see that the the self service won't be covering the the online job applications just yet. That that that, that is going to come a bit later. Uh, rotors for um, complicated shift working. So, for example, if you're running a, a helpline, perhaps which is which is um, staffed. You know, sort of 24 hours. Um, your paid staff or your volunteers will will, will, will will need to be scheduled according to rotors. Um, disciplinary and 
personal improvement plans, um, organisation charts, and internationalisation. Um, so that's, that's what we've got planned. If there's anything else which you think we're missing, please let us know. And so there's some contact details up there for if you want to get in touch with us. There's also the uh, URLs of the demo we've used and the blog that you can contribute to. So if you, um, if you work for a non-profit in, in whichever field and you think your, your organisation might benefit from CBHR, then please come and talk to me or go and speak to the person who's responsible for HR at your organisation and just send them uh, some contact details. We'd love to get in touch. Um, if you're a technical consultant or a developer, then please talk to your customers about this. Maybe they're, they're not ready to use it just yet, or maybe they're, they're, they'd like to wait till it's more developed. But please just help us put, put the story out. Um, because we think that there are a lot of organisations who are just muddling through with HR. and. We just want to make it easier. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. This might be not quite relevant, but would something like this be usable in a, a co-op or a membership-based structure where people are applying for roles that aren't based solely on salary? Sorry, can you just say it? So, 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 would this be applicable in a cooperative where people were applying for roles within the co-op that were not just salary based but also um, share based? Um, yes. So is that would that is that not really? Um, probably in its current form, uh, no. But I think it would be a relatively minor adjustment to to make it appropriate. So it would just be an adjustment to the way remuneration is done. So. At the moment, it, it certainly covers paid people, it covers volunteers. Um, I think it would be quite, quite, quite a small adjustment to, to adjust it. So I'm not so familiar with, with cooperatives, but essentially, is it, is it like a sort of profit share? There's loads of different models as far as I'm concerned. I'm not an expert either, but I've yeah. a few, quite a few co-ops use city CRM in some capacity, and there's not, they've always sort of how to, how to try and manage people and share so Yes. Yeah, yes. sometimes it's minimum salary and then shares and further. Yes. Other times it's just share based. Sometimes it's not, there's no money involved, but it's the, you just give them a search. Yes. Yes, no, I think that, 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 that would be quite a simple adjustment. I mean, at the moment, we, we have the ability to record monetary remuneration, but then also a series of other benefits, and, and we can just define additional benefits to go in, so I'm sure we could uh, add in a section for, 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 for sort of, you know, uh, a share of the cooperative revenue. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes? Is, is uh, this usable in uh, the context of servicing different organisations? So, uh, managing people of different communities? Um, it certainly could be. Um, I think at the moment uh, it's one organisation for one instance of CIVI HR. Um, now there are certain fields within that that, that that you could use. So for example there's um, a region field. So if you were organised by country say um, you could just you, you could just tag each one by a region. But in at the moment, the design was that one legal entity organisation um, would be would be mapped to one instance of CIVI HR. So, Tim, I just wonder whether you've got. Actually, I had a question. I was sort of wondering what the business context is where we have. The business context yeah. is that we, we do some HR services for multiple organisations. You've got an so out HR outsource. Thank you. 
Anybody else? As in payroll? Yes, because I know you'll keep a copy of the salary. Not at the moment. So at the moment, for say for um, salaries, all we can do is record the salary. Further down the line, though, we'd like to do something similar to, to what City Accounts is doing, in that information that was manipulated within City HR could be exported to in, in, in an accounting format. So currently you could export to like a CSV. You can the account inside it that supports the yes. CSV. Yes. But, but we, we, we would like to go further than that and, and export in a format that can be easily read by the, the commonly used accounting applications. Um, one thing to, to make clear, though, is that we're not intending to develop any specific payroll feature because we, we feel that that part of the market is already very well served. So we can, we can do the payroll adjustments in CBHR and export a CSV across to the payroll organisation, but we aren't planning to try and run a, a, a sort of payroll service within the city HR. Anybody else? No? Well, that is great. Well, thank you all for paying attention. Um, it's great to have so many here. We, uh, we did this demo in um, San Francisco, we, we, we had quite a few less, so I sort of get, feel very encouraged that, that the, the, the interest is building. So please come and talk to me you know, after the session and catch me uh, over the next couple of days. Catherine is going to be around today until sort of... Mid-afternoon. Mid-afternoon, so, 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 certainly until after lunchtime, so uh, she, she's a great per person to speak to um, if you want to hear how what it's like using the city HR. If, if you miss me and you've got any sort of burning questions, Andrew can always give you my contact details. So. Of course. Jamie. I just had the